Hello. In this lesson, you will learn about sequencing, selection, and iteration. This video uses the text mode of the Code.org App Lab environment. However, if you'd like to learn about this topic in the block mode, check out the video in the upper right-hand corner of the screen or click on the link in the video description. One of the criteria on row 5 of the Create Task rubric states that 3C on the written response needs to have a student-developed algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration. We're going to look at all three of these things individually. The Create Task rubric defines sequencing as the application of each step of an algorithm in the order in which the code statements are given. We'll start by looking at this example of sequencing. In line one, we declare a variable num1 and initialize it to whatever is returned when we prompt the user for a number with the message enter number one. Next, we declare num2 and again prompt the user for a number with the text enter number two. Then we declare a third variable sum and we set it equal to num1 plus num2. Finally, we set the output label to the string the sum is concatenated with whatever value is in the sum variable. These steps in the algorithm execute one at a time in order, which makes it an example of sequencing. Let's try running this block of code. We'll run the program, we'll hit sequencing. It pops up, asks us for number one, we'll put in three. Asks us for number two, we'll put in six. Together that's nine, so it outputs the sum is nine. Next, let's look at an example of a block of code that demonstrates selection. The create task says, selection determines which parts of an algorithm are executed based on a condition being true or false. The use of try exception statements is a form of selection statements. If you know what try exception statements are, good for you, but it's unlikely you're going to use them on the create task. More likely, you'll use selection statements like if and else. We start by declaring var num3 and prompt the user for a number with the text enter number three, then declare the variable num4 and prompt the user for a fourth number. Now here is the selection part. So first we're checking if num3 is greater than num4. If it is, we set the label output to num3 is larger. If this is a false statement, then we check if num4 is greater than num3. If num4 is greater than num3, then we set the output to num4 is larger. Finally, if neither this nor this is true, then we know num3 and num4 are equal. So let's press selection. Num3 will be 4. Num4 will be 7. And that says num4 is larger, which it is. If you'd like to learn more about selection statements like if and else, check out resource number two in the video description. Next, we'll scroll down to see the last block of code. The create rubric says iteration is a repetitive portion of an algorithm. Iteration repeats until a given condition is met or a specified number of times. The use of recursion is a form of iteration. You probably won't learn about recursion in this class. For your iteration in the create task, you will most likely use a loop like a for loop or a while loop. In this block of code, we start by declaring var target equals, then we prompt the user for a number and ask them, calculate the factorial of what number? Then we declare the variable factorial and initialize it to one. Then we have a for loop. We declare the counter variable i and set it equal to one. We continue the loop as long as i is less than or equal to target. And after each cycle of the loop, we increase the value of i by one. Let's say when the user gets prompted for a number, they type in five. That means this for loop will go through five times. It'll go through 
when i is 1, when i is 2, when i is 3, when i is 4, and when i is 5. So factorial will end up being 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120, after the loop is complete. Then we're going to output the factorial of target, in this case 5, is, and the value of factorial, which is, in this case, 120. So let's click on iteration. It prompts us for a number, say 5, and it tells us a factorial of 5 is 120. If you want to learn more about for loops, check out resource number 4 in the video description. Also, if you want to learn more about iteration in general, check out resource number 3 in the video description. That concludes the basics of sequencing, selection, and iteration. For your create task, you'll need to write an algorithm that includes all three techniques. If you'd like to see a variety of resources for the create task, check out resource number five in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and then leave me a comment down below. To see the next video, click on the image on the left side of the screen. To see the entire playlist for the series, click on the image on the right side of the screen. And to keep up to date on all the latest content, hit the subscribe button in the middle.